All right, everybody, welcome back to Secrets Can Kill. Uh, last video, we finally opened up Jake's locker and we talked with some of the students as to what we found in there, which we found a video camera, a book about like an essay book and one was about manners and etiquette. And then we found a magazine that was talking about a masked mystery judo winner of the men's competition and then a newspaper about a break-in at the pharmacy. So then we got into the teacher's lounge, which is where we are right now, and so we will start exploring that. So let's get on this lovely computer, because guess what? We know Aunt Eloise's password, because it's in the safe. There we go. We're in! We're not Eloise, Drew. Ha ha ha. All right. I feel welcomed, so we'll figure this out. So, library to-do list, locate the missing book, English Essays Through the Ages. If you'll remember, that's the book that was in Jake's locker. Let's see, school maintenance stuff, clean stairwell, call Dylan HVAC, change password to boiler room door, so maybe we'll want to get into the boiler room. We're going to print something out because we can. And let's see, the maintenance room, aka the boiler room, looks like the password is note. So we will note that. That was bad. Let's forget I said that. Okay. Um, just to let you know, the main lights were left out in the library the past two nights. Okay, that is interesting. Not. Okay, we're done with the computer. So let's see what we printed out on this dinosaur. Uh, lights were left on. Toolbox from Dylan HVAC service left in boiler room, left note with maintenance. Oh, backpack belonging to Connie Watson found in student union placed in last and found. Uh, observed young man peering through school entrance doorway. He identified himself as, as an exchange student and was trying to retrieve his homework. I let him in and escorted him to his locker and escorted him out of the building. That is probably our lovely Hal Tanaka, because he's an exchange student. Um, I overheard two individuals arguing in the video lab room on the first floor. When I approached the lab, two males exited from the door and ran down the hall toward the school entrance when they saw me. And then he's describing the males. The younger male ran out through the school exit while the older male continued down the hallway. I pursued the older male but could not locate him after he turned the corner. The exit near the boiler room had already been locked, so I suspect that the trespasser had a key to open it. A work order for the lock to be changed has been submitted. No equipment appeared to be vandalized or missing in the video lab. And then it looks like several students were caught soaping teachers' lounge windows. Students admitted that they were engaged in a senior prank. And Daryl Gray was one of those students, so maybe we will ask him about that. Daryl, student council president, what kind of... What kind of, I don't even know, what's the word I'm looking for? Role model, that's it. And look at that, I'm pretty. A trophy was not the only prize, but also money of a greater size. Thanks, map word puzzle. I just, if you didn't see, I just read the top. Okay, yeah, that's it. Senior final papers. Hal Tanako, ooh, let's see how well Hal did. And look at this. If you'll notice, Hal's essay is exactly what was in the essay book. It is on etiquette and word for word. Well, that is just suspicious in itself. And my guess is that Jake knew this. Because why else? I have no idea what that means. So you know what? Not going to even look at that. But yes. So if you did notice, that was word for word, the essay book. So it looks like our lovely Hal Tanaka. I'm not. Nope. He copied his essay pretty much. So how? what in the world are you doing? Let's ask him about it. Because... <laughs> I think that's great just to put him on the spot. And we're also going to try to get into this boiler room, but if you'll notice, braille! So we'll have to figure out some braille there. 
All right, so let's track down our friend Hal, because I feel like he could shed some light on this, obviously, as he's the one who copied the essay in the first place. And then we're going to be like Jake knew you did, didn't he? Because he had the book in his locker, so that must mean that he knew. Oh my gosh, please click. And Hal says he's very ashamed, and his family will be extremely happy about this mistake that he's made, which is true. And Jake found out that he copied the old essay and blackmailed him into doing his homework for him. Jake? Okay. And it looks like Hal said that he had no other choice because he can't stay in the United States if he doesn't get a scholarship. And he had to take extra courses, and he just got buried in work. So we're going to ask what happens when Jake found out when he's done being a chatterbox. And it looks like Jake demanded that he did all of his homework for the rest of the semester, or he would tell his family everything. So it looks like Jake was a little blackmailer. So I'd probably kill him too. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. But I don't know. So we'll, we'll accuse him of murder right here, right now. And he was not happy about the situation, but he values human life, so he would not kill Jake. So, yeah, he's asking us not to tell anybody that we won't gain anything, and it would destroy his family. So you know what? We won't tell anybody. It looks like he regrets it. He wants to become a doctor. You know, he just copied an essay, guys. <laughs> and then we're going to ask if he has any idea who killed Jake. And it looks like when he delivered Jake's homework to him, he mentioned being late for a meeting with Daryl Gray, but it was strange to Hal because they weren't friends. So looks like we need to talk to Daryl because that's kind of suspicious. Oh, wait, I'm so lost for a second. <laughs> All right, so let's go talk. Dang it. Let's go talk to Daryl. But guess what? We have to insert disc one. <laughs> I know, so fun. Yeah, and then we can figure out how to get into that maintenance room because who knows, it sounds pretty important. Okay. We will wait for disc one to work its magic. And then we are going to talk to Daryl. Daryl! Guess what? Oh my gosh, this is so long. Um, what is the saying? Yeah, there we go. So we've kind of put together that Jake was involved with Hal, Hulk, and Connie. He had information that could kind of be incriminating to all of them. So we'll talk about that. So Daryl thinks that we should hand this case over to the police or pressuring each one until somebody cracks. And somebody dropped us off a note? Oh my goodness, it looks important. So we're going to ask, what note? And he's going to give us that um, once we finish talking to him. So we're going to ask him about the pharmacy first. And then the police, he said the police thought it was a prank, but it didn't look like anything had been taken. But then they found out that a steroid was taken. So that is odd. And then Jake was not into judo, so that does not explain why he had that in his locker. So, oh, crap. He didn't give us the note. Oh, there it is. I was like, oh my gosh, we're stuck. So, the note says somebody has the solution to our mystery and that we have to meet them in the boiler room. So, looks like we're going to the boiler room because this can only turn out well. So we're going to go back to the school, back to inserting disc two, and we will get into that boiler room because somebody has a solution to our mystery. All right, so we do need some braille to get into that boiler room, but if you'll remember, there was a book on braille in the library, so back there we will go. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I've been choosing that right key because we do have that key that is gold and looks exactly like the library key, but I haven't made the mistake so far. So I'm going to write this down so I remember it. And the password was note. So we've got the N, 
O. Where's the T? T. And then E. There we go. Now we can get into the maintenance room because apparently Braille is a very popular use of codage. <laughs> I am just, I'm fabulous at wording things today. Forgive me. So let's see. So there we go. And where's the O? O T E. We're in. And guess what? This is like so disappointing. You go in. And you have to insert disc one. Oh, I dropped my disc thing. You have to insert disc one literally right after you just inserted disc two. So I know it's great. But again, as a reminder, this is the only game where the locations are split up onto two different discs. Thank goodness, because I don't think I would have lasted this series if there was more than one game where you had to do this. Okay. So let's go down the service elevator and figure out what the heck is going on. Who's waiting for us? What is the solution? Who killed Jake? Uh-oh. Well, the boiler looks like it's on fire and somebody punched out the elevator, so it's not operating anymore. This is awesome. We're going to die in here. Just kidding. We're going to grab these gloves because nobody's going to kill us today. We're going to get that lock off of there with these bolt cutters. And then, oh my gosh, I can't back up. We're going to die. <laughs> We're going to do this. So I cannot even read that. So I'm going to try to remember that, though. Um, I'm really not that great at this puzzle. I feel like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? So yeah, one lever, like some levers, allow others to be moved, if you'll see, like that, and then that, maybe, oh my gosh, I don't know why this is so hard for me to remember. <laughs> Sorry, I keep going back to it. Okay, I think that stays there. Oh, whoops. And that stays, oh, I did it. Oh, guys, we're alive. You're welcome. So let's see. And it looks like there's a number. Oh, we can't even call it because it's sound and it's going to skip right over it. So we're going to escape out of this ventilation system. Odd, a videotape. That's interesting. Looks like we'll have to go back to Aunt Eloise's to figure out what is on this tape. Which good thing because we're on disc one still. Thank goodness. All right. Let's turn on that television. Let's insert this videotape and figure out what the heck is happening. Oh. And that is Hulk escaping from the pharmacy with steroids in hand. Okay, well that sucks. What is this? The Masked Judo winner? Interesting. And it's Connie in the men's competition? Connie. Oh, and there we got Hal caught in the act of copying his essay. That book is ginormous. Oh, Hal. I like the different angles. Cinematography at its finest. What is this? This looks like the pharmacy. That looks like Daryl Gray. And it looks like he's giving some papers to somebody and getting paid for it. So that guy is smoking, so he is shady. He doesn't make good decisions, so he must be a little shady right there. Well, it looks like this videotape was the one that belonged to that empty cassette play or that empty cassette tape. That's not what I'm trying to say. The video case in Jake's locker. And it looks like... That's, this is the tape that should have been in there. So Jake had dirt on everybody and was probably back blackmailing them all. So I'm going to stop the video right here. Next video, we're going to talk to everybody and figure out what Jake was making them do because it looks like that he's been blackmailing everybody, including our contact. So stay tuned for that next video. And we're going to get to the bottom of this because everybody's being shady. But thank you for watching.